Hey everybody, James here. We're out at the deer camp today checking on some mineral stations, changing some SIM cards and some cameras. It's kind of a damp, humid day. Uh, I figured it'd be a really good day to start doing some blood trail training. And uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to take advantage of this time to maybe answer some questions that I've been seeing pop up on the website periodically on how to get started training a puppy. Uh, maybe you went and got a puppy during the off season and you just want to know how to get started training that puppy. First, let me say I'm no expert. Uh, I promise you that. Uh, these few little methods I'm about to show you, they do work. I've used them. Thousands of people have used them. So let's get right into the meat and potatoes. Number one thing you need to buy, if you've got a puppy and you plan on using that puppy for blood trailing deer, is this book, Tracking Dogs for Finding Wounded Deer. I won't even begin to pretend that I know how to pronounce the author's name, but you can see it here in the picture, hopefully. Get online. They've got a really nice website. Order this book. It should run you about $39 delivered. Order this book. You can't go wrong. And a lot of the methods I'm fixing to show you are listed in this book. So start here. We're going to do a supply list real quick. Item number one, buy this book. Item number two. You can see all the deer we harvested here at the camp last year that I was able to get the hides from. I cut into small pieces, vacuum sealed, and froze. I also collected blood. This hide and this blood came from the same deer. To me, that's pretty important. Maybe not to you. I think it's very important. The hide has some fatty meat tissue attached. Maybe a little blood left on it from when we cleaned it. It smells like that particular deer. This blood came from that deer. There's no confusion on the dog there. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it this way. This is just the way that I know it works. Blood diluted down with some water. Deer hide from the same deer. That's all left over from last year. I've got a 20 foot heavy duty tracking lead here. If you like to track your dog on leash, that's fine. I prefer not to, but that would be something you'd need to purchase if you decide to go that route. Harness and a collar. Also, last but not least, a good tracking bell. I've got this one clipped on the end of the lead here. Uh, it's best to hook it on the collar. What will happen when you start getting into the bells, the harness, or heavy duty tracking collar? You want to let that puppy know that every time you put on this bell, every time you put on this particular harness, it's time to work. And it won't take them very long to figure that out. You'll kind of see an excitement level build when they hear the bell jingle or when you snap that particular harness on. So without further delay, let's get right to it. I'll also have a list of this printed out on the video in case I forgot anything or if you have any additional questions about what we've got here on the table, I'll have a supply list that will show up on this video. Stay tuned. Okay, first things first here, I want to go over something that I feel is uh, absolutely critical to training a puppy. And that's making sure that when you're doing these drags that you don't have your puppy learning to track you. So, as you can see, first thing I do is put my rubber hunting boots on. I pretty much go in to do track training just like I would if I was going into bow hunt. Sprayed down, scent free, gloves if you've got them. I know it's awful hot out here. But try to prevent as much of your scent in the track as you possibly can. Like I said, just make sure you wear rubber boots. And also try not to touch the hide. Use gloves if you got them to prepare the hide. And as you, as you can see here, all I've done, I've got the piece of hide that I had frozen. I punched a hole in it with my knife. We're in a piece of cheap cord through here that I've tied off on a stick. Got the blood ready to go. And what we're gonna do to start with, I'm just gonna take this container of blood. I'm gonna find me a spot out here on the ground, like this bag over here on the right that I can mark physically with my eyes with a few drops of blood to give me a starting point that I can find later on. Once we do that, we'll come back and get the drag and begin. So let's go ahead and mark this spot. Got a Kroger bag laid on the ground here. This is a good starting point for the puppy. Just gonna put a few drops on the ground. So you can see that there. This would mark my position where the deer was shot. So I'll go back and get my drag. 
And I think it's important to start puppies with a drag. Uh, this is heavily debated on whether to drag or whether to skip steps or whether to teach a puppy to follow sporadic blood drops. I don't think you can go wrong either way, but especially if you've got a puppy that may really not be into this right off the bat, dragging a deer hide with the blood or just a deer hide by itself in a constant drag line will keep a puppy interested. And you don't want to really start off with a long drag. I'm going to drag this one about 50 yards in a perfectly straight line. I'm going to set the hide down right on top of the blood. And I'm going to drag it away from me. That's one reason I like this stick and cord method. I've got it away from me. And as you can see, I'm on a little opening here in Old Foiler Trail. I'll be able to tell pretty quick if this puppy is following me. I'll be walking over here. Or if the puppy is actually following the deer set. Let's go ahead and drag this about five yards and I'll put down a few more drops of blood. Got some more blood. Keep dragging. I'm just going to drag it alongside me here. Okay, we're about to the 50 yard mark. Okay, once you get to your 50 yard mark, or wherever you stop, just lay it on the ground. Put out a couple more drops of blood. You don't take much. One deer can go a long way when it comes to blood for training. Okay, that's it for the drag. We'll uh, go back and get the dogs ready to go and be right back with you. We got Jackson, the six month old Catahoula. Jackson's well on his way to becoming a good tracking dog, but I'm using him because he's the youngest dog I've got access to today. Just to show you how I start puppies. First thing I'm gonna do, you know, I've got him geared up, I've got his bell on, his excitement level's high. I've got him on a lead. I don't normally use a lead, but I want you guys to get in the mindset of at least starting your puppies on lead. And this is for one reason, so you can give them mild corrections along the way. Keep in mind, you want this to be short, sweet, and fun. If he starts to get off trail, I'm going to help him a little, so you do the same. So here we go, I'm bringing him to the spot where I first started the drag. Got a little root right here. Oh, he already smells it. Jackson. And I'm going to give him a verbal command. I like to use the command dead deer. So I'm going to say dead deer and point. Jackson, dead deer. He's checking that out, and there he goes. Just let him follow at his pace. If he gets off, see he's circling. If he gets off, just lead him right back to it. Dead deer. See where he's going? He's not following my track. He's following where I did the drag. It's nice and slow. Try not to pull back on the collar too much. When they find it, lots of praise. Good boy, Jackson. Good boy. A little game of tug of war. Some, some dogs like it, some don't. Jackson loves it. Play with him, get him excited. Let him know he did something good. Also, let him chew on it for a minute. Let him play with it. He found something, he worked hard. Let him have the reward just for a little while. That's all there is to starting. Like I said, this one was only 50 yards. Do the 50 yards two or three times a week for two or three weeks. Uh, move it out to 100. After you get to that two, 300 yard straight line mark and your dog's nailing that consistently, then throw a corner or a Z bend or, or even try doing a circle. The point is just to keep it short and sweet while he's learning and try to end every training session on a positive note.